Oh yeah, thanks for joining me. Um, in this lesson, we're going to be looking at this following problem. We've got um, a mass hanging from the ceiling by a spring. I don't know why, but whatever floats your boat. Um, we to find the length L in terms of the natural length LO uh, and the mass M uh, and gravity G. Um, well, in your previous studies, you may have seen this in the form spring force is equal to minus kx. Let's just take a look at this equation for a second. Um, my, the first thing you might notice is there's a minus there. Why is that? Well, it's because um, the spring force is a restoring force. So, um, and x is just the displacement. So, the uh, spring force is proportional to the displacement by the spring constant k. So what does that mean <laughs> exactly? Well, let me just show you. Uh, if we had a spring, this is a spring, doesn't look like one, but it is, um, of uh, spring length LO. That's the natural length of the spring. Well, this uh, mass would be quite happy sitting there because it's uh, not being pulled this way and it's not being pushed that way. It's just that it's springs at its natural length, so it's not applying any force to the object. But what happens if we have the length like that, but we extend it in this direction? Well, we've, 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 ex we've extended the spring in the positive x direction. So if we put that back into the formula here, and we've got um, a positive x, so the force is negative. So if we pulled out a spring this this way, then the force of the spring is going to be acting that way, and that's uh, quite intuitive. Um, on the other hand, we've got the natural length, and we moved the spring, we pushed the spring inwards, so contracted it. Then we've moved by amount minus, minus x. So if we push, put that back in the equation, we've got minus x times minus k, so that's positive. So the spring would be pushing the object in the positive x direction. That's why it's called a restoring force. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at a more general um, equation. H, after um, Robert Hooke, who invented it, um, is equal to K, L, minus L, O. And this is all times by the directional vector s. I'll talk about the directional vector in a minute, but let's focus on this bit for a second. This is just your x. So if we look at this one here, um, we had an original, uh, we moved it to l, like so it's that length, it's length l. And if we take away the length, the uh, natural length, LO, from that, all we're left, of, left with is the X. This might be all a bit too much, like coming too much together there at the moment. So it doesn't look very good, but I hope you get a general idea. So the first thing we're going to do when uh, doing these problems, tackling these problems, is we're going to do a force diagram. Let's do the mass in the middle. That's the mass now. Well, we've got, as usual, we've got the weight acting on the mass. The weight is equal to mg. A lot of people confuse weight for mass, but it's not. It's uh, it's the mass and the gravitational uh, acceleration times together. It's actually your weight. And in the opposite direction, we've got the spring force. Because if you imagine, the mass is actually pulling down the spring. It's not actually... It is, uh, hasn't got its natural length anymore, it's moved to L, the so length L. So we've got the weight is equal to mg, and we've got h is equal to kL minus LO times this directional vector. So. Now we can talk about the directional vector. So um, the directional vector for a model spring always 
points from the, from the mass towards the center of the spring. Well, in this case, we're given the direction, uh, the direction I. Well, this uh, spring, the spring force is acting in the opposite direction to I. So we can rewrite this as K L minus L O times minus I, because it's going in the minus I direction. <laughs> so we can rewrite this again, minus K L minus L I, Boop. I. The next thing to do is uh, we're going to apply, uh, apply Newton's second law to this. So that's the sum of the forces, so all of the forces acting on a particle together or a mass together. And I use uh, mass and particle uh, interchangeably a lot. Um, all the forces acting on a particle um, add up to MA. So that's Newton's second law. But in this case, uh, although it's been pulled out, it's still hanging and not moving, it's not accelerating, so it's, it's in equilibrium, so there's no acceleration, so FA is equal to zero. So we put some of the forces, we've got W, and we've got H, is equal to zero. Well, we're just going to resolve this now in just the I direction, so I don't have to worry about putting I, we're kind of turning it into a scalar, so let's start putting in the values now. We've got MG plus h which is now oh, minus k l minus l o we're going to leave the the i because we're resolving in just the i direction is equal to zero and we've got we can now sort this out a bit so g minus k l minus l o equal to zero and we can start to expand this so we've got mg minus kl plus klo don't don't forget your signs you've got a minus here and you've got a minus there so together that's a plus minus times minus is a plus it's equal to zero right now we're going to try and uh, get it in terms of l so we're going to find l so we're going to KL to this side, move it over here, and then just rewrite these two. Equal to, I'm going to put KLO, so I've just switched these round, it doesn't matter, they're both plus, plus MG. And now we divide both sides by K, so we've got L minus, K over K is just one, so you've got LO plus MG over K. And that is the final answer. I think it's always good to um, take some time to, when you get a final answer, just to look at the equation, see if you can make sense of what it's saying. So um, this is quite an interesting result because uh, if we had, if K was really large, then it'd be this number divided by a really high number. So it'd be L plus a very small number. And that's quite intuitive because if the spring constant was really high, it'd be hard to compress it or to extend it. You need to apply more mass or more pressure to it to extend it. And on the other hand, if K was constant and you increase the mass load, then it'd be the uh, natural length plus a very, very high number. So it'd be, it would extend a lot. And that is intuitive as well this is actually the equilibrium uh, equation for a length uh, of a mass on a spring so, and uh, this has been a pretty rough ride but <laughs> it's not too bad it's my first major tutorial so apologize in advance for my awkwardness but it will hopefully get better over time when i uh, do it and Thank you for joining me and hopefully see you soon. Well, that's up to me, I guess, but <laughs> hopefully soon.